Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new mini-series on measurements. In this show, we discuss the challenges of having too much, too little, or the wrong type of measurement data. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Most of us are in the business of making money rather than pursuing knowledge for academic or personal reasons. As such, the cost versus benefits of the entire data gathering and analysis and remedy process should be considered, at least informally. The costs include the data gathering setup that may include investing in sensors and computers or PLCs. It includes everyone's time and possible lost production during data gathering trials. It includes the cost of your time for analysis. However, it also must include the cost of educating and marketing and persuading a key someone that someone needs to do something different than that someone is currently doing. The cost must also include the cost of actually doing something different, which could include more expensive raw materials or machine upgrades. All of these are sunk costs. However, even if you achieve returns, which will usually be some combination of reduced waste, reduced delay, or reduced customer complaint, you may still not necessarily be doing anything of net economic benefit for your company. You must also achieve some payback period for that initial investment of the above items, which may be on the order of one year. That might be easy, for, for example, if Remedy is merely turning a key knob into a slightly better position and reducing waste as a consequence by a slight amount. Payback could be much harder to achieve if you need to redesign your product or upgrade your machine to get results. Whether we do trials or troubleshooting, we need to budget for the number of measurements that we need to take, as we cover in this show and in the next show. Here I use the word budget quite purposefully. Every single measurement and every single data point of every single trial will cost. Even if you already have the sensors in place and no production is lost, the setup and analysis and interpretation will cost you time, which costs your company money. As I teach in my troubleshooting class, data is, in itself, worse than worthless because it costs money before any returns are even possible. Only when effective action takes place based on that analysis of that data will there be any chance of paying back on the initial investment of data gathering. Even then, there may be many reasons why payback might fail. You could have too much, too little, or the wrong type of data. The cure could be worse than the disease, as the saying goes. The cures might lie well outside your company's control, such as being at the suppliers or at the customers or being bound by codes or contracts. The cures might not be achieved because management is dithering, often because they are too busy or because they want a more pleasant answer. The cures might be out of reach because key decision makers don't pay attention or don't understand the conclusions of the study or for any other neat number of reasons of failure to persuade. Those are just some of the ways that payback might not be achieved. However, analysis paralysis would mean that progress or improvement in your company would never happen. Worse yet, guessing, intuition, or trial and error may well produce even worse results. Still, there is at least one situation 
where measurements should not be done, at least initially. That is, any time where the published science and experience is solid, as it is for many web handling problems. Go to school first before you try and reinvent the wheel. The web world is quite varied. At the high end, a multi-machine paper mill might automatically gather and store outputs from 10,000 sensors at intervals from one millisecond to one second. The ultra-fast drive motor control data, for example, is usually only stored for 24 hours in a circular buffer due to the torrent of data coming in. There are many distinct challenges with so much data. The first is figuring out where to even begin. Perhaps you suspect that the winder rider roll loading, the nip loading, affects some defect. Perhaps a wound roll corrugation is a perfect example. Note that this example search is guided by experience, first principle, and science. In any case, you need to first find the PLC or the PC that the data is stored in. Then you need to find the tag name, which is usually some quite cryptic WNDR01RRPFDBK or something like that. Then after all of that, you must figure how to get that data from the PLC into your computer which then you can use a spreadsheet for analysis. At the low end, it's quite common to have very few of any sensors on a machine, and quite common that none of them are recorded in a retrievable way. In that case, you could record what sensor outputs you might have by hand on a sheet of paper, if the required data rates are slow enough, and if the sensor is in any way related to the problem at hand. Alternatively, you could temporarily wire from a black box text point to a PC data logger, if there were even such a point to access. However, having the wrong type of measurements is also at least as common as having too many or too few. For example, let us say you're interested in troubleshooting web breaks. Load cell tension loss is readily available, but a sheet break detector is usually faster and more reliable. For example, let us say you're interested in a machine jam that is commonly caused by wrinkles. Direct measurement of wrinkle severity would be much more valuable than machine jams, which is later in the machine cycle and could be caused by other events. For example, let us say you're interested in reducing wound roll corrugation severity. Yes, perhaps most of your customer returns are supposedly for corrugations, yet their conclusions are binary instead of analog, a topic we will cover in the next show, late by days or weeks, and subject to the interpretation and judgment of your customer. Of course, merely counting returns instead of corrugation returns would count other troubles besides corrugations. Wrinkles and wound roll defects are easily in the top three causes of waste, delay, and customer complaints in the web industries. Yet, Objective measurements of these troubles are nearly non-existent. To compound our troubles, as we learned in my award-winning and trademark Web 101 school and as well documented in the Web Handling Handbook, a wrinkle is not a wrinkle is not a wrinkle. There are perhaps as many as 20 distinctly different defects that people call wrinkles. Each has totally different mechanics, and more importantly, totally different set of remedies. So even if you counted wrinkles, you would be mixing together totally unrelated defects in the same bin. 
Mongrel defects are also a major cause of complaint, while the language for the, those defects are slightly more uniform. Rejection is almost always visual and thus quite subjective. Even when the attribution is correct, which is not always the case with customers. Even if you have decent data sensors to work with, it is seldom trivial to get that data onto your PC for analysis. While the details vary enormously, the theme is nearly universal. Lots of time and lots of expertise is required for even the simplest study of two variables, one of which is waste delay or customer complaint. To add to the data acquisition challenges, we have sampling challenges. Most sensors are time-based sa sampling, while most defects are lot or wound roll based sampling. I have covered this set of issues in great detail in Web 401.21 A through G, so we don't need to repeat that here. Still, I don't want you to give up. In the next show, I will show you how some problems can be cracked wide open with but a single observation. Despite the wide variety of defects you might wish to troubleshoot, and despite the wide variety of data sources that you might have to work with, most sources will fall into one of three categories as discussed in the next three slides. The first and most common is what I call the fishing expedition. Here you measure anything that can be conveniently measured usually some mix of customer returns, machine and lab data, and cross your fingers and hope that some correlation will be found. While this smacks of desperation, sometimes this is the best or only way to get started. Nonetheless, there are enormous problems with this approach. The first is the very real risk of p-hacking. We will cover that statistical sin in an upcoming clip. However, for now, note that if you measure enough, note our previous warning about too much data, you absolutely will find correlations without causations. In layman's terms, you will catch all sorts of trash fish. Second, how do you even know that you are fishing in the right location? It is possible that the key factors might, might lie in the processes upstream of your plant. Your incoming raw materials. You might have little information on these raw materials in their processing compared to what you might have in your own plant. The same is true of the customer's machine if you are working on customer complaints or returns. This reminds me of the story of the drunk who lost their keys. He is searching for his keys under the street light. Asked why he's looking there, he responds, because the lighting is better there. Okay, if you lost your keys, looking where the lighting is good might be one place to look. However, checking again your car to see if you locked them in or under the bar stool where you sat might be other good candidates for a search site. A perhaps much more useful category of measurements is what I call targeted. This requires some working theory, hopefully well-grounded in science, or at least experience, that, for example, postulates that O is a function of X, Y, and perhaps even Z. In that case, measurement of O, X, Y, and Z would all figure prominently in the data gathering and analysis. This is the process of induction which may then cycle into the process of deduction to refine the working theory based on the test results. 
induction and deduction and logic is well covered in my problem solving course as well as in the public domain so we don't need to do that here. However, of all measurement categories, the objective function is probably the most important. If you follow my work in economic topics, you would not be surprised that perhaps the best objective function would be dollars or euros of lost waste, delay, and customer complaints. However, an analog proxy such as wrinkle severity or corrugation severity might be a decent second choice. However, if all you have is binary count, such as did it wrinkle enough for the customer to complain or not, then we would probably work with that. Though analog metrics are almost certainly better, and we will show how to do that in next week's show. I teach how to select or construct proxies in my web one-on-one -on -one and troubleshooting class, so we don't need to do that here. There are three starting points for a more detailed discussion of problem solving. The first is my industrial problem solving book that is a good companion to my industrial problem solving course. The second is the must-have 750 page web handling handbook written by myself, Tim Walker, and Dylan Jones. This is where we would look to for the science-based targeted and objective measurements for most web and roll defects. This can help you avoid going unnecessarily into fruitless fishing expeditions. Last but not least is my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 people just like you. Here you will learn about web handling, winding, common converting operations like slitting, as well as a good sprinkling of problem solving techniques. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Measurement Miasma mini-series. I hope this discussion does not cause you to give up on data tacking and analysis because that was not my intent. To give up because it might be hard will paralyze progress. Take hope. Some problems require no trials or measurements if the science is solid, as it is in many web handling areas. Other problems can be unlocked in from one to four observations, as we will see in next week's show where we will detail the objective function measurements and how to construct or improve them. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.